Hello, and welcome back. So yes, I am back from Florida. I am back in my home studio. I apologize to everybody for the delay, but it is a long ass ride from Florida back to Long Island. Uh, I There are benefits to driving as opposed to flying. Uh, you don't have to worry about COVID on a plane, you don't have to worry about security, flight delays, flight cancellations due to winter weather. So all good. I just needed to rest a few days and get my studio back in, uh, in order. We had a couple delays with that as well, but we're back. So a couple uh, things to talk about before we get to our main topic of today. So uh, yeah, the, the trip home was good. We beat the storm in the Carolinas, so good to go. Um, my last uh, topic that I talked about was uh, that Judas Priest had decided to uh, have a go to a four man band, or what they or what Rob Halford uh, termed a quote unquote relentless four man band. I, I don't see how that could have happened. But it's a moot point because they announced uh, probably the day I was en route back to New York from Florida that they are going scrapping or nixing that idea and they're going back to a, a five man band. They're bringing Andy Sneap back. So, I, I mean, it doesn't really look good for them and their management, uh, you know, playing these, uh, these little games, but they're back to a five piece and uh, all that are going to see them. I wish you nothing but a great show. I probably won't, but again, I've seen them nine times. And again, everybody who goes to see them, wish them very well. Great, have a great show. Okay, so today's topic, we are gonna give the show a little shot in the arm we're going to do a top 15 of, wait for it. Let me just get to my background that I'm going to use for this. We are going to talk about my top 15 songs of Led Zeppelin. So Led Zeppelin and I have a very strange relationship. So back, and I may have mentioned this on the Sea of Tranquility show a few times. Um, back when uh, I was a teenager in like, I would say 1978, uh, I, a friend of mine who lived on my block at the time convinced me to be a KISS fan. And I went in with both feet, all things KISS. Little did I realize that pretty much everybody in my middle school stopped liking them, started hating them. And I caught a lot of abuse because I still liked them. Meanwhile, they all thought they would fit in by being fans of Led Zeppelin. Uh, and I was very resistant for quite a while to, to be a fan of Led Zeppelin. But when I did, again, I went into it wholeheartedly. So, so I bought Led Zeppelin 4, which you see behind my, my head there, Old Man with the Sticks. Uh, definite, uh, you know, iconic image, album cover image. Um, so when I became, when I really caught on with Led Zeppelin, so I, I had a stereo. It was a turntable with, of all things, an eight track player. But eight tracks were no longer that they were obsolete even then. You couldn't buy them in the store anymore. But my father and I went to uh, one of those tag sales or estate sales at this house and they had a bunch of old uh, a track sitting there so for a buck i bought led zeppelin too took it home granted it was not in running order but i listened to it and i fell in love then i started listening to their other albums later in life this album led zeppelin three as you can see right behind, yeah, there we go, right behind my, sh my right shoulder. 
that album, that's an album that has really grown on me. But you're going to see that uh, Led Zeppelin 2 is uh, heavily influenced in my top 15 list. So let's start with number 15. It is off of Led Zeppelin 4. It is one of their folk tunes. Hart played it in concert when my wife and I went to see them. Played it beautifully, going to California. That nice mandolin sound that John Paul Jones plays. What else can I say? So number 14, this is off of their first album. We're gonna go down like a lead balloon. Hence, as you can see, the, the Hindenburg uh, explosion. So for Led Zeppelin one, but it's the first song on the first album, Good Times, Bad Times, great song. Number 13, and this is also on Led Zeppelin four. This song is on the dreaded side two that they almost never played when I was a kid. Everybody, they only wanted to hear side one. You know, Black Dog, Rock and Roll, Battle of Evermore, Stairway to Heaven. Never wanted to listen to side two. But when I finally did listen to side two, fell in love with those songs too. So Misty Mountain Hop is my number 13. Great song, great keyboards. Uh, you know, not enough is said about what John Paul Jones brought to the band, but we'll get into that a, a little bit soon. Uh, so number 12 comes off of the album Presence. That is the only song in this list. Uh, my favorite song off of Presence, Nobody's Fault But Mine. Nobody's fault but mine. Nobody's fault. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, number 11. And this song is not on any album per se. It is the B-side of Immigrant Song. Hey, hey, what can I do? Another great song. Another great acoustic song. In keeping with uh, their their slight change of their sound at that time where they were going to a more folky sound. But good job, guys. Best decision you guys made. And you'll see it in my top 10. Okay, so number 10 is the first of quite a few off of Led Zeppelin II. And this is a song where I would imagine myself if I were a pro wrestler coming down to the ring and having that nice beautiful killer riff as my as my entrance music bring it on home beautiful bass in the beginning by john paul jones with some harmonica by uh, robert plant and then into that killer jimmy page riff -na 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 okay so number nine and you're going to find that a lot of songs in my top 10 of Led Zeppelin, they're, they're longer epics. I'm not as big into the, the crushing hard rock songs like Black Dog and Rock and Roll and, and Cashmere and et cetera, et cetera. So my number nine is a Willie Dixon tune off of the first album and I, I just love it. Uh, you Shook Me. That's a song that has always stuck with me. That's a, actually Led Zeppelin. That was another album that I got as an eight track to play in my eight track player. And yeah, I just fell in love with the, the harmonica interplay with, with the slow Jimmy Page riff. And yeah, wonderful, very bluesy, good stuff. So number eight, back to Led Zeppelin two. And we're gonna stay with Led Zeppelin two for a few of these. It is the second song of the album. And this is a, a song where at the end where it goes, a lot of uh, stereo uh, switching of, the, of the, the, the left and right track. What is and what should ever be. Another great song. You know, I love that little interlude in the middle where it's a bit of a, Almost sounds like a, some kind of Polynesian uh, 
uh, guitar solo. Do, 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 do. The little slide in there, very nice sound. Okay, so number seven, another bluesy tune. Again, this is off of Zeppelin II. And this is where uh, I think John Paul Jones' bass playing really comes into prominence. I'm talking the Lemon song. And he just goes into that beautiful little interlude in the, in the middle, right before, you know, in between Jimmy Page's great solos. But again, very bluesy, a little sexist, but uh, talking about squeezing lemons, etc. Okay, so number six, and this is the last of the songs that I plucked off of Zeppelin II from my top 10 and people. This was unintentional. What I did was when I rated these songs, I judged these songs on their own merit, not because they were on certain albums. So number six, okay, I'm gonna take a water break. So number six, this was like a, a vehicle for uh, Jimmy Page's great solo work, Heartbreaker. Dun, 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 dun. I can't do it like he does, but amazing solo in that middle section that almost didn't make it into the song. Thank God it did. Okay, so number five. So we're done with all the Let's Up on two songs, I can assure you. Number five is the one song off of album right, right over my head, Houses of the Holy. Uh, now, Houses of the Holy, it's a mixed bag for me. Some great songs on that album, some not so great songs. Like, I don't never like the crunch. I don't care for Dire Maker. Rain song is eh. But my favorite, favorite song on Houses of the Holy, my number five, Over the Hills and Far Away, which, by the way, that was one of the first songs that I learned to play on when I started taking guitar lessons in my adulthood. Great song. Again, goes from heavy to mellow, et cetera, et cetera. Number four. Now you, you may have noticed that a lot of my songs are that, you know, for my deep purple, my deep purple, my Led Zeppelin top 15 are a little more obscure. Now this song, very famous song could not this you know couldn't not not include this song uh, and again Led Zeppelin could have made millions on this song as a single off of Led Zeppelin four over here uh, but they showed but they wanted everybody to hear it in the context of the album talking stairway to heaven I just you know I love that that very acoustic beginning to that very slow build to the very end where you, you, you finally comes in with John Bonham's drums at about the three, four minute mark. Then the big solo to the crescendo ending. As we wind on down the road. So great song. And when I heard it when I was a kid, I didn't even know there was a such thing as Led Zeppelin, but good job, guys. And this song almost always makes all the top uh, voted, uh, the, the top of lists of like uh, these radio stations when they have these, uh, uh, we're going to give you our top thousand songs on Labor Day weekend as voted by the fans and stay away to heaven's normally in, in the top five, I'm sure or I say in the top three, almost always. Okay, so now to my top three. Okay, so this one is off of Led Zeppelin three, an album that has really grown on me over in the last few years. As a kid, I didn't care for it because again, followed the crowd, was into the more of the hard rock stuff, but it was a really good job of Led Zeppelin to diversify their sound. So 
It's their seven minute epic, Since I've Been Loving You. Again, John Paul Jones, amazing work with that Hammond organ, which I absolutely love. And again, the slow, bluesy guitar of uh, Jimmy Page, absolutely wonderful. Number two, it's gonna go back to the first album, Led Zeppelin, for a song called Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You. Again, another great acoustic, gets a little heavy, back to acoustic. I, I just, I love it. I, I love when Led Zeppelin plays those, these more complicated songs, you know, or songs like Black Dog and, and Rock and Roll are just a little too played out for me and not as complicated. So good job on Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You. Which brings us to our number one. Our number one, and I actually, I don't even see that album pictured here. Or do I? No, not there. This song comes off of physical graffiti. Again, another very melodic opening, gets a little heavy. And then I, I love when he does those upstrokes. If you ever really need somebody, burn. I'm talking 10 years gone. What a great song. So that's my top 15 of Led Zeppelin. I'm going to rattle them off for you again really quick. So number 15, going to California. Number 14, Good Times, Bad Times. 13, Misty Mountain Hop. 12, Nobody's Fault But Mine. 11, Hey, Hey, What Can I Do? 10, Bring It On Home. Number nine, You Shook Me. Eight, What Isn't What Should Never Be. Seven, The Lemon Song. Six, Heartbreaker. Five, Over the Hills and Far Away. Four, Stairway to Heaven. Three, Since I've Been Loving You. Two, Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You. And number one, Ten Years Gone. So that's it. So uh, just to let you know, uh, we have a few things uh, now that I'm back and I got my studio back. Uh, I'm gonna try and make up for a little lost time. I have a few things planned uh, in it. So my next thing that I had planned, uh, two things planned. I, I'm not sure which order I'm, I'm gonna go. So I'm gonna do another top 10 of Seinfeld. One of the characters, you'll see who. Uh, definitely another eccentric character on the show. Um, I'm also look, planning uh, this weekend on bringing a guest to my show, another new guest. Uh, he will dial in through Zoom, and we are going to talk about ranking the albums of Jethro Tull. Uh, basically, the format we're going to do is we're going to do our top 10, and then Albums 11 through 15, we're going to write in in the comments section. But I wanted to get that done ahead of the Zealot Gene, which uh, Jethro Tull is releasing next week, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, there, will, there will be a, uh, a review following on the Zealot Gene. So stay tuned. Got a lot of good things planned in the future. So... This is uh, Jack Toledano for All or Nada, according to Jack, signing off. Have a good night and good to be back, everybody. Bye.